It is a great honor to speak to you today at my alma mater, Howard University. I want to express, I know, I'm proud of it. I want to express my deepest appreciation to Barbara Dunn and Betty Gardner and all of the members of the Founders Day Committee for your hard work in making this event possible. Thank you, you have really done a great job. Today we celebrate the founding of the Association for the Study of African American Life and History. And it might seem to some of us, and, and especially to some young people, now certainly not the Kiamsha young people, but to some people, it might seem that the founding of a scholarly organization is not a particularly radical act. And yet it was. In 1915, led by Carter G. Woodson, Asala became an integral part of the fight against systemic racism. And this was no small charge, given that the larger culture condoned and reinforced the imprisonment of blacks through the leasing of convicts to businesses, through the denial of our rights in the form of Jim Crow laws, through governmental policies that condoned lynching and racial discrimination in education and employment, Black inferiority was conveyed through art, film, literature, advertisements, and especially through education from the kindergarten level through the university. Imagine yourself going to school and seeing these disparaging images. Woodson launched the Association for the Study of African American Life and, His and History in order to fill in the gaps and correct these lies. He published the Journal of African American History only four months after the birth of the association. And he wrote in the journal of 1919, there is little effort to set forth what the race has thought and felt and done as a contribution to the world's accumulation of knowledge and the welfare of mankind. And recognizing that little effort that had been done, he set out to change that picture.